Merry Christmas! We went from hopes of a Christmas rally to a Santa sell-off and the markets closed down another 1.5 to 2% yesterday. But fear not, I've got some great news for you today and I'm going to give you a Tesla update and the bombshell Elon Musk dropped, go over some winning trades that are crushing it for us that you can copy and finish with a few stocks that are on fire in a good way and these stocks are expected to keep going up in 2023. So let's get this party started. Our first bit of good news is Elon Musk said he is not selling any Tesla stock under any circumstances in 2023 and Tesla rose 2% on that news in after hours trading. Our second piece of bullish Tesla news is that Tesla has a new $7,500 discount and you can take delivery of a new Model 3 or Model Y between December 21st and December 31st, 2022 for a $7,500 credit and 10,000 miles of free supercharging. That supercharging benefit is a little like a year of free gas, which for a driver going from gas to electric would save another $1,500 or so. Tesla owns and operates the largest network of direct current fast chargers in America. Now this is some great bullish news for Tesla, but I want to repeat what I said in Wednesday's video if you are looking to buy Tesla right now. If you are looking to buy Tesla stock right now, then the trend is your friend and right now the trend is down. So I would wait for a bottom to be formed before jumping in because you never want to try to catch a falling knife and Tesla dropped 8% just yesterday, which shows you how fast that knife can fall. But I have to admit, at these Tesla prices, I'm definitely looking to DCA a few more Tesla shares, but I want to see a bottom form before I part with my hard-earned cash. And with the beatdown Tesla has taken in the last month, the bottom could form quickly. But I'm going to say it again, it is very dangerous to try and catch a falling knife and Tesla is having their worst year and worst month ever right now. I believe Tesla is offering the aforementioned $7,500 discount for deliveries before December 31st because they are worried about missing their fourth quarter delivery estimates and if they miss those when they report in January, Tesla is likely to drop further. And Tesla is reporting earnings around January 25th and with many expecting Tesla to miss those quarter four earnings, buying Tesla right now is definitely high risk. What you do is up to you and hopefully my videos have given you some useful information. Next, I want to go over three trades that are making us money every week and I give trade alerts in my Discord whenever I buy or sell these stocks. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor and I don't give financial advice, but you can definitely watch and learn from these trades. Our three trades we're covering are all parts of the wheel strategy. So our first one is Vale, and we already own the stock and we actually sold the $16.50 covered calls that expire today and they're down 16%. So Vail closed at $16.54 so we're actually in good shape because if Vail closes below $16.50 today, which is Friday, then we lock an annualized ROI of 19.5%. If Vail closes above $16.50, we'll simply sell more covered calls next week and our current cost basis is $14.64. The wheel is working. So this is a great example of how we use the wheel and get regular consistent weekly profits. Next up, we've got Coca-Cola and again, we sold the covered calls and they are up 80% and they should expire on Friday for 100% profits, wash, rinse and repeat. Same thing, we'll sell more covered calls next week. And then our last one, this is a stock that I've been doing really well on and we sold some YPF $7 puts and they're up 77% and YPF is a stock that has been on fire. Right here I said we can take profits anytime and it's currently trading at $8 and 68 cents. So we've got a huge margin between our put price and the current price of 886. Now January 20th is a long ways away and locking profits is a good thing and I'll likely lock profits maybe today, maybe next week, but at these sort of uh, profit margins, I'm happy to lock these profits and then maybe get into it again. On a side note, YPF is holding up well in this wild market. The book value is almost three times the stock price and you don't see that very often for profitable companies. YPF is a great example of looking for strong fundamentals. And let's pop up this image here and we can see in the last week, this stock is up 18.6%. It's in the last month, it's up 18.4%, two months, 20%, six months, 175%. So this stock is absolutely on fire. And let me scroll up and show you one more. So here we've got on Wednesday, I did a day trade and this is all done real time. So you can follow it along if you're in the discord. And this was on the spy and we did a bull put credit spread. I bought the 383 
call. I sold the 382 and I'm looking for a quick scalp. And that was at 1034 p.m. my time here, and then which is 1034 a.m. in Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Next up at 10.41 p.m., just a few minutes later, I gave an update. Profits currently at 50%, take profits anytime. And then, oh, a little bit later, uh, not long, about a half an hour from when I opened the trade, closed the SPY bull put credit spread for a quick 60% gain. Note, if I planned on staying up, there are likely more profits to make, but I'm not being greedy, and a 60% gain for 30 minutes is a great return, and I wanna show you guys what is possible. Right now, the SPY is trading at 387.11, and this position is profitable if the SPY Spy closes over 383, so I have or actually had a lot of room for the SPY to pull back and still make 100% profits on the day. The beauty of the credit spreads are that I normally have about a $2 cushion where the price can move against me and I'm still profitable. The key is to get your setups correct and enter when you have a high probability for success and then to manage your risk. And then here's an update. The SPY actually closed at 386.23, so this position would have had 100% profits if I stayed up and let it expire and 100% profits for any close over 383 and the SPY stayed well above that all day. So this is what we do, check us out. And real quick, here are a few of our winning trades from yesterday going with profits from five to 203%. So if you're not making these types of gains in your own accounts, then join our Discord to get all of our hot stocks, trade alerts, and help from our awesome community. While a lot of stock market YouTubers talk about the overall market, that bores the crap out of me because it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the markets are serving up a crap sandwich. That's why on my channel, I always like to talk about actual stocks and finding ways to profit instead of talking about something as meaningless as the weather. So with that in mind, I wanna do a quick side-by-side -side analysis on copper stocks because they have been on fire and these stocks are up 20 to 63% in the last three months and they're expected to hit record highs in 2023. In fact, Goldman Sachs is predicting copper prices will reach a record high of $11,000 per ton. Here are three reasons why. Number one, demand for copper will likely rise steadily as it is a critical element in the energy transition because copper is used in electric vehicles, charging stations, wind turbines, and solar panels. Number two, copper stores are dangerously low and according to Trafigura, the world only has enough copper stored to cover 4.9 days of production and by the end of the year, that number could be down to 2.7 days. Number three, China is ramping up their industrial production. Years of restrictive COVID-19 policies and lockdowns are being relaxed due in large part to Chinese protests. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that copper demand will increase when China's factories return to pre-COVID production levels. So now that we've set the scene for why copper is likely to go up in 2023, let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the top copper stocks. We're now at beast mode analysis to do a side by side on these copper stocks. And our first one is Capstone Copper. The ticker is CSCCF, and this is an OTC stock. So we don't have some of this information at the top right here, but that'll be okay. Next up, we've got FCX, and this is Freeport McMoran Copper and Gold. Then we've got SCCO. These guys are a big boy in the copper industry, and this is Southern Copper Corporation. Then we've got another OTC, LUNMF, and this is London Mining Corporation. Corporation. We've got BHP, and this is BHP Group Limited, and then we've got Barrick Gold, ticker GOLD, and yes, this is a copper video, but Barrick Gold also does a lot of copper and silver mining as well. So the first thing we want to look at is going to be our income statement, and this tells us whether or not these companies are making money, and this is why I like these copper stocks. Check out the operating margin. We always want it to be above 10% if we're looking at anything long-term, and our winner on the day here is going to be Southern Copper at 55.46%. We've also got BHP coming in very strong at 50.51%, and our weakest, I mean, these guys are CSCCF at 32.8%, so these guys have phenomenal operating margins. Next up, we've got the net income margin and the bigger the better. And here we've got BHP coming in at 47.46, but all of these guys are strong. Our weakest on the day is going to be Barrett Gold at 16.87 and I at 16.87. And I also want to point out that Beast Mode is color coded. The most important to me in each section is going to be the light blue. Second most is going to be the light green. And as always, if you need to know what anything means, all you do is hover over that little eye, a pop-up comes up and and it'll tell you exactly what it is. And this is a great way to learn fundamental analysis because you can go through each of these and see what all of these different ones mean. 
Next up, let's scroll on down and take a look at our assets. So we're gonna come down here to the balance sheet and this tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable and we wanna compare the total assets to the total liabilities and that's gonna give us what we call the tattle ratio. So here we can see that Capstone Copper, they've got $1.7 billion in assets, their total liabilities are $712 million and their tattle ratio is 2.43 and the bigger this number, the better. Our winner on the day here is going to be Barrick Gold Corporation coming in at 3.22. So they've got more than three times the amount of assets compared to the liabilities. That is exceptional performance metrics. These are all very insightful to a company's overall condition. You'll notice all of these are light blue because I think they're all very important. So for revenue growth last year, our winner here is going to be Capstone Copper at 75.15%. Now this is the smallest of the six companies that we're looking at and it's easier for small companies to grow in the beginning. And actually if we look at their numbers, these guys are blue, which means they're first in category for all of the different things we're looking at. Number two is going to be LUNMF at 63%. Number three is going to be Freeport McMorrin Copper at 60.9% and we do have a bit of a red flag for Barrick Gold. They actually had revenue growth that was negative last year of 4.84%. For free cash flow margin, our winner on the day is going to be Capstone Copper again at 52.83%. And this is a really important thing that you should be looking at on any company you want to buy for the long term. And free cash flow, it measures a company's ability to expand its business and pay returns to shareholders using only the money generated through current operations. So when a company's got positive free cash flow, it means they can go on indefinitely because they can pay their bills and grow the business. So number one again is going to be Capstone Copper coming in at number two. We've got BHP at 40.73%. I mean, all of these guys are strong. Our weakest on the day here is going to be Barrick Gold at 16.5%. The Rule of 40 indicator, this is another really good one. Our winner is going to be Capstone Copper. And the FNR indicator, this is a down and dirty way to compare companies where we sum up the total of the free cash flow, the net income margin, and the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The bigger the number, the better. Our winner, again, Capstone Copper, 156%. Coming in at number two is is a London Mining Corporation, 115%. Then we've got FCX at 104%, BHP 102, SCCO, Southern Copper Corporation, 99%. And then really bringing up the rear on this one is gonna be Barrick Gold at 28.53%. And for the book value ratio, normally the companies are gonna be under one. However, if they are over one, like Barrick Gold is, that's a great sign because that means that their book value is higher than their current value for the stock. So this is a way to find undervalued stocks. Management effectiveness tells us how well management is generating returns for investors. And I like to look at the return on equity. Our winner here is gonna be BHP Group at 59.2%. We can see they're actually winning on most of these categories right here. Here. And coming in at number two, we've got Southern Copper at 43.9%. And then if we look at the 5R indicator, this sums up all five of our returns. It's another down and dirty. The bigger the number, the better. Again, BHP is our winner. Coming in at number two by a pretty good margin is going to be SCCO. And what else have we got? If we look at the growth metrics, companies should be consistently growing their business. So net income growth last year, Capstone Copper was on fire at 1,706%. For a beta growth, they were also our winner. They're pretty much the best in category on all of these. And then for total equity growth, last year it was FCX, Freeport, McMormon, Copper. And that's a quick look at our copper stocks today. Here are six reasons to consider buying copper stocks. Number one, high demand. Number two, portfolio diversification. Number three, copper is an inflation hedge and copper's price tends to rise with inflation. Number four, Copper is known to have a more stable price than other precious metals. Number five, the trend is your friend and right now copper is trending up. And number six, the transition to clean energy requires larger quantities of copper. All right, that covers copper for today, but I've got one more thing. If you would like to get a free trial for my TradingView indicators, the link is down below. Right now we're looking at the Tesla chart and if you focus on my two indicators at the bottom, if we have green shading on both indicators, stocks tend to go up where if it is red shading on both indicators, stocks tend to go down. Now right now Tesla is red on red and I like to say red on red and you're dead. So if you're looking to go long, wait for it to go green on green. There's a lot more to technical analysis but these indicators help a lot and as my gift to you, if you use the link in the description below to ask for a free trial before December 30th, 
31st, I'll hook you up with all of the indicators so you can check them all out. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and if you want to give me a present, give me a like and comment on this video. See you soon.